Hi, welcome to Embedded Programming. And today we're going to be looking at the Citron MD13S. So what is MD? Well, motor driver, motor controller, you can use those interchangeably. The 13 represent that you can pass 13 amps continuous through this motor control board or motor driver board. Now S stands for single, so basically a single channel. All right, so what does this board look like? Well, there's this pretty little board and I really like it. Now before I get much further in, I wanna say a heartfelt thank you for all my subscribers. The channel hit 1,000 subscribers last week while I was on vacation. So again, I need to apologize for why the video um, is late, but I had to take a break. Uh, I was on family vacation, but now I'm back. And I have three playlists on this channel currently. Embedded Programming, which is this playlist, Go on the Run, and Learn and Flutter. All combined, I don't know how my users are spread out and who's watching what, but thank you nonetheless if you're a subscriber if you're not a subscriber please hit that subscribe button if you like what you're seeing spread the word okay now let's get into it from this picture you can see that so these two pins down at the bottom here bottom left is motor a and b so those are your two pins to control one motor and then you have these copper pins up at the top left that's for your power and on the far right hand side top over there almost at the top right is where you have your control for this pin. So you have ground, you have four pins essentially. Ground one is not collect, connected, so it's really three. And your direction pin, so just one pin for direction. This is different than what we used in the last um, motor control, which was the L298N, which required two direction pin. Before that, we used another um, motor control shield for the ESP8266, and that only required one direction pin also so we can imagine with this pin one is going to be like let's say forward or backward it doesn't matter you toggle it and you go the other direction and then your speed is with this pulse width modulator now why these four pin and why this strange looking header well that is because this board support the groove shield um the groove connector so i'll talk a little bit more about the groove connector but needless to say that it makes connecting your boards if you have devices and your you have a shield that supports seed groove um, connectors it make it really easy to connect things and i'll show you that okay so let me show you what it's like to unbox this um this citron um drive motor controller or motor driver so it comes in this nice little blue box and here you can see this is the board, and you can see that oh, this looks identical to, let me get some light here. So let's see if I can change the way the light falls on this. Maybe, all right. So as you can see, this is identical to the picture that you see above there. And I'll go over some of the features of this board, but you get this nice little bag with some other goodies. So let's get in there. Ah, come on. There's unboxing. All right, so this cable connects very nicely. And as you can see, down the bottom there is ground. This one is that is not connected, that's usually a five volts or VCC. So you just push, it on, push this on there. It's connect securely and that's it. And so you have ground, five volts, and then the two signal pins so depending on what the board is and i'll cover groove um interfaces and some of the devices in another video i've been planning to do it before but oh well a lot of things to cover and so in this case the white is going to be our pulse rate modulation and yellow is going to be our direction and we'll see why that's important but anyway just pinch this and you pull it off but it's easy connect and both ends of this cable looks the same so when you push this in here and connect it to this, you can put it on a shield. Now, what does the shield look like? This is the ESP8266 microcontroller and it's connected to this groove shield. And as you can see, once I stick this in, now we don't have to worry about mucking around with um, 
trying to stick wires into there. Instead, I can easily push this into one of the supported ports here. And we'll talk more about which port we should use, but let's just say I decide to use this D3 that's right there. I can just push this in. And as you can see, if you look, ground is down, down on the bottom, 3.3 volts is on the red, and then I have the D5 coming out of the white pin, and then D3 coming out uh, the uh, yellow pin. So it's sort of the lowest pin is on the top, then the next highest pin, and then you have three volts. And so it sort of repeats. And if you look there, we'll show a much clearer picture with this um, with some diagrams later. But anyway, so that's what the motor control shield look, that's what the, sh the groove shield look like. And you can get them for ESP8266, and I have this one here for Raspberry Pi. I have one for, uh, for, for um, Arduino, sorry, that's not a Raspberry Pi one, this is the Arduino. I have one for Raspberry Pi, and I have one also for the um, BeagleBone. Okay, so now that um, this is what come out the box, these four pieces, you have the board, you have this cable, and then you have these headers, these um, header for to control, connect the motor, and header for power. And so um, the thing is, I'm not going to solder this one right now. Um, I have four of these. I already have one that I soldered before. And it's completely soldered and ready, so we're going to be using that today because we're going to try to control two motors. Remember, the S here means single. So. Uh, we can only control one motor, so in order to control two motors, you need two of these, which, like I said, I have four of them. So this is already configured, um, solder, <laughs> not configured. Here, I made a mistake when I put the black header on and I turned it the wrong way. So you can imagine the way I put it on by accident when I did it the first time, it was turned this way. And so that caused some problems because you can't get to connect it from behind there. So now I need to turn it around. So this is exactly what I'm going to do today. I'm going to install it this way and turn it around. Now, getting this off when I saw that it was a pain. You can still see some of the, the mark. But even more painful was trying to get is trying to get a black replacement header. I was able to buy a pack of similar size one for, um, but they're blue and um, I don't have even green ones. I think I got some greens actually, um, but I couldn't get black one. I couldn't find black one. I've searched high and low and I couldn't find black one. So if you find black ones, please drop me a comment and let me know. So I need just one, literally just one black one so I can um, put it on this one because I, I'm using the black one from the pack I just opened. So I'm always going to be short one black one. If I never get a black one, I'll just use like the blue one that I have that I was able to buy. I got it on Amazon, like a pack of 50 or something. Uh, it wasn't expensive, it's just trying to find black. Um, the size also is important. Um, I'll drop this, the size, I can't remember what it is. I'll drop it in the comment on the video as a comment. If, if anybody needs it, you can get the correct one because I ended up buying a pack of 50 um, of 2.5 millimeter or something like that, and those were too small. So um, I'll let you know which size this is that I actually bought. Okay, um, so let me go solder this because I need to solder this on here since I already have one header solder on already. I'll just go solder this other head on there and then come back and continue the video. And we'll go through talking about this board and all the features and how to use it. All right, okay, I'm back. I just solder on this uh, second block, header block on this board. So now we have our two boards that we're gonna use. And so the only thing I need to wire up, remember the signaling is gonna be very straightforward and easy to connect because I'm using the groove connectors and I'll be using groove shields. So I have two shields that I'm gonna use. Now, um, given my experience in the previous video, that update to part two that I mentioned, so which is the previous video I just posted, I explained that oh, this ESP8266, um, somehow the pulse width modulation signal uh, even though you specify that um, you want your pulse width modulation to be completely on by saying 255, it still is partially on. Considering that oh, this is not working very well and that it takes a long time to make these uh, go through the testing and all this other stuff and going through the examples, I might actually put this to the end if the video is not running long and instead start with the Arduino. Now, I'll do some more follow-up work on this ESP8266 to see if the problem is with this specific one or another one. Now, the one that I was using, by the way, um, 
um, that had the problem was this one that was attached to this um, breadboard. But I actually have two more. So I have this one that's on this already plugged into this groove shield and I have a third one sitting over here. So I'll do some testing later to see um, maybe if hopefully the problem was just with this embedded board, in which case I could get rid of it. But if it's um, seemed like it's a problem with all of them, then that really sucks because I like the fact that they have built in wireless. I've said that before. OK, so once again, let me put this video on pause and go connect power. I have to connect um, shared power. Now, I have as an option, I can connect like nine volt power and shared between the two. Um, I tell you my problem with a nine volt battery. I think um, they're dying kind of fast, but I also have this um, cell here. It's a 11.1 volt battery. Um, 1800 milliamps and this is from a uh, helicopter RC helicopter that I had and it broke and I got this out of it and so I think I'm going to use this instead so what I need to do is I bought a couple of these on Amazon they, they didn't sell one so I ended up buying like 10 of these or some nonsense but I have this now and I tie it there so that they don't accidentally touch because this battery, I'm afraid it would explode just due to the amperes, um, the amount of current that it has in it. But anyway, I'll connect these to, um, figure out how to connect this to these two so that they're, they're powered by the same um, battery. Uh, if that doesn't seem to work, I'll just go back to using this nine volt battery for now, but I think I should be able to power, connect the power. I'll connect the two motors, you know, one of these guys here, the other one on this guy, and then we'll figure out how to connect our groove connect. I'll go over that. So let me go do the corrupt connect the batteries and the motor, and I'll be right back. Okay, so let me show you what I have so far. So this is my header that's gonna plug into my battery. I'll show you how that goes already. And I'm gonna be careful to make sure that all these two guys are far apart. So um, that's what's going on here. So this is connected to these two alligator clips with wires. And then at the end of this, so right now there's not plugged into the battery. At the end of this now, I just need to connect these to this fancy little breadboard that I have. Now these small breadboards, the way they have work is that they don't actually have a power and ground rail. Instead, they just have the connection across for where you put the socket um, dual and line chip across there, okay, because it's really small. So this is going to tie the ground for my two boards together. And this tie the power for the two boards together. So all I need now is to connect my power and I'm going to get two male to male contacts, put them here and then connect them to the alligator clip. So let me get that. I should have that already. So, okay, so this is a lot of wire. And then now I just have my power on this end. All right, so now that you see it connected, it doesn't matter. Let me keep this wire out of the way by doing this. Um, no, it doesn't really matter that if you see these boards or not. Actually, yeah, it'd be nice to see these boards because these, the, these have some cool features I'd like you to see. Um, so let me see if I can get those in the shot. Um, when this stuff starts turning, everything is gonna go flying all over the place. Um, so I have to be careful. Um, so let me back up with the light a little bit so that um, we're now washed out here. Um, so there we go. Um, yep, that's in the shot. Okay. Oh man, this is like so. All right. So that's that. All right. The power there, those ones, those two alligator clips over there stay apart. I'm good. Um, no, um, let's talk about this board before I connect power. So if you look at the features of this board, it's really, really something. So I can explain um, on the left side top is where you connect your power. And then on the bottom, those two copper um, connectors is where you connect your motor. Now they give us some errors for that. Now in terms of that 13, remember I said this board is MD for motor driver 13 this 13 continuous amp. So you can drive some really large motor and you're not going to lose a lot of heat or a lot of energy or power to heat because these are used in MOSFET instead of that big old heat sink that we were using in the L29N, which I told you could warm up and use dissipating a lot of heat and therefore power. It can do a peak 
of 30 amps so for example if your motor stalls or something like that then and 30 amps um is the max that it's rated for but 13 continuous that's a really big motor um so you have output indicators and it's going to basically tell you your direction so if this led lights up you know you turn in one way if this lights up you turn in the other way you have um overcurrent indicator led but you ain't got to really worry about that um, you have an error LED to tell you if things are not connected correctly. Uh, for the control, you notice there's Groove compatible, and that's what we're using. 3.3 volts to 5 volts logic, uh, which means that oh, this works perfectly fine with our uh, ESP8266, which is just 3.3 volts. Um, and then we have, um, oh, this will go up to 20 kilohertz, but by default, we know that all oh, these um, ESP and the Arduino is doing 1 kilohertz um, pulse modulation. You have your manual test button. Now this sort of landed in the wrong place, but these are the two manual test buttons here. This little guy here and this little guy. What it means is that even without connecting anything, as I will demonstrate just now, we're going to be able to test that we can still turn our motor back and forth just by using those two test buttons. And of course, you have um, this power LED here. So a lot packed into this board. Now the only thing that I would think is a little negative about this board is that each board is a single channel. But you can see it's not very big. It's pretty small, and the other thing that they did was they make it surface mountable. So if you don't connect the headers, um, this can pretty much screw down flat on your board, and then you can connect um, your pins, right? Um, your con controls because um, they're really, really flat. Okay, so let's um, now take a look at how we're gonna control it. Now, like I said, I will do the Arduino first, but let me just cover the ESP8266. So this is what the ESP8266 Groove Shield look like. The Shield is a board that you connect to like your microcontroller and it does like pin breakout. Some of them have their own circuitry in terms of um, additional chips and so on that they give you other things. So for example, um, you can have like a Wi-Fi shield, a Bluetooth shield, that sort of thing, right? Ethernet shield, all this sort of thing. Um, so we also look at the motor control shield, right? So I told you a shield is something that's made it specifically to that board, whereas when I say controller, it's sort of don't think of any specific board. Um, so this shield, this groove shield, as you can see, once you stick the um, microcontroller, the ESP8266 into in the sockets, then it break out some of these pins. And so you see you have your I2 square C2, I2 square C connectors. We haven't covered that yet. You have an analog um, port here and your digital port, these are the D3, D5, D6, D7, and D8. And I'll come back to explain that. And this is URT for serial communication. Now, when we look at the pins on the ESP8266, we will see that the lowest pin for transmit and receive is down towards the bottom. So if you look at the ESP2 pin out, you'll see that how we have our transmit data zero and receive data zero. So these are these two pins at the bottom here that's reserved for serial communication. And that's broken out by the groove as UART, okay? Now, let's see if we can understand what's going on in terms of how you use this pin. Remember I said for the groove um, connectors, they all have this standard configuration where you have grown, your VCC, and because this is the ESP8266, the VCC is 3.3 volts, and then you have two pins for um, whatever. So in the case here, when you're doing serial communication, well, the two pin is gonna be, the first one to be RX and then TX. When you're doing I square C, you have power and ground again, but then your two pins are gonna be the clock and then data. When you're doing analog, well, you have ground, VCC, and this second pin is not connected, but the first one is going to be your analog input because that's all you need for analog, whether it's input or output. Um, you just need one pin, okay? Now, when it comes to digital, the way they've done this is they've tried to be really flexible. So D3, this port, really tells you that the first pin is tied to data pin 3, and then they show you that the next second pin is data pin 5. So D3 here comes out and this is data pin three and D5 is this other pin that's connected here. Um, they chose not to give you D4. I don't know why, but that's the, the decision they made. Now, um, one of the things about how they've wired up is such that um, you can get some, uh, a non pulsed modulation pin with, a, with pulsed modulation. So what I mean by that is D3 
which is not pulsed modulation. D4 is not pulsed modulation, but D5 is. And so you have a non pulsed modulation with pulsed modulation. Then 5 and 6 are both pulsed modulation, but 7 is not, and 8 is pulsed modulation. So 7 and 8, you have also get non pulsed modulation, pulsed modulation. But notice all this weird overlap that they have, like D8 and D4. So if you actually want to use 4, it, you have to use it with pin four, D4 and D8 together. But it doesn't come with 3 and 4. So they sort of mix it up a little bit, but there's some overlap. Notice that if you're using pin 5 here, for, for whatever reason, uh, with this port, if, you're using, if you require 3 and 5, you cannot use 5 here. Only 6 is available on this port, right? Because 5 would be the same 5 that's there. And so if you want to use three and five, six and seven, then essentially this port cannot be used because the five is going to be used over here and this six is going to be used here. Once you take a minute to sort of study it and look at it, it sort of makes sense how you should use it. Okay, so what does this mean for us? What it means for us is that when it comes to connecting to a port, remember what we have for our controls is that we have ground, and then this is not connected. And then we have pulsed modulation as this pin. And then this pin is our direction. Or if you read it from top to bottom, we have direction, pulsed modulation or speed, and then not connected and ground. So let's ignore the last two. So we need to be able to connect to a pin for the ESP8266 where this pin, whatever port we choose, that second pin is a pulsed modulation pin. Otherwise, so that we'll have to simulate pulsed modulation instead of having it built in. And so three and five gives us that, and that's one motor control. And this pin, um, this port D7 also give us that. So let's go back and take a look at the pinout and confirm that. And so if you look here, what we want is one pin to be pulsed modulation, and the pin before it to not be pulsed modulation. So we sort of want the the second pin to be pulsed modulation. And if we look here, D2 is a pulsed modulation pin, but that is not provided by our shield. Our shield does not provide D2. So we have to go down and ask, okay, where's the next one? So, okay, pin five here is pulsed modulation. And so let's see which shield output give us five. Well, that is on D3. 5 is pulse rate modulation and so that means that we're getting to speed here and then the direction is out of d3 okay so which is 0 and 14 is what we're going to use to control one motor uh, the next option it would be to use pin 6 as a pulse rate modulator pin and we can go back to our shield to see where do we have pin six come in at the second pin? And this is, would be on port five. And then we could use five for our speed and direction. But we already have five being used here to control one motor. So we have to keep going and looking for another one. So we can't use six. So the next one would be eight. So on which port do we have eight? And that's over here. So we have eight here as a second pin, which would be our speed. And then seven would be our direction. And so if you go to the pinout, that means that uh, we're using 13 and 15. 13 for direction and 15 for speed. Okay. So with all that said, what that means, if we go back to our diagram here, means that we're going to use this port D3 for one, to drive one motor and then this D7 to drive another motor. And that's how we figure it out. And if we go over now to the Arduino connection, this is what our Arduino board look like. And we can start to play the same sort of game and see which pins we, uh, which port we need to use. And so I've selected to use D2. Um, this is going to be for motor A, for example. And motor B, we can use D4. Again, we want to make sure that our D4 is going to be, um, D5 is going to be a positive modular pin because we know that our the second pin is what we need for speed. And so let's see if that lines up with the pinout for D4 and 5. And it does. D4 could be our direction and D5 can be pulse rate modulation.
Okay, so D2 and D4 is how we're going to connect it to the Arduino. And so before I jump into playing with the board, let me go over. So I show you the feature of this board already. So let me show you where you can get it. So this is the Citron website. And you can just come here and search for this board. And this is the MD13S. And you see it's about $10 for one. And I show you exactly what you get. Now, of course, they have other boards. So if you click on motor driver, um, they have do some dual channel boards that are a little bit more expensive. Um, you can look for channels, two channel boards, okay? Um, in terms of seed, notice how the seed here is spelled with tr three E's. <laughs> so seedstudio.com and you can come and look at the different breakout board or shields for different uh, microcontrollers. If you land there, then you can just go to shop and then groove and then come down to breakout board and then you can click on the breakout board that you want. Um, if you click on orders, it should show you all of them. Um, it takes a little, some time to load. And there's the ESP8266 breakout board. And as you can see, there are tons of other ones. Um, and you can just go crazy. Uh, one of the things you might want to do is actually get a kit. And it came with a number of sensors, LED, and all these other sort of stuff. Okie dokie. Now that we have these boards connected properly, all we need is power. So off to the side here, I'm going to connect power and hopefully I don't cause an issue. Plug it in. And so power. And I don't know if you can see the two power lights are on, but here are my two test pin. So, oh, look, at that's pretty fast. <laughs> I don't know if I should really use this. This might be too much for arm. Um, right? And you can see. And then the other direction. Right, and then over here. Oh, that's just too much. So what I'll do is let me disconnect this butter. The, the, the battery I'm using here, the ampage might be too much for these little motor. I'm just go back to the nine volts. So now I'm powering it up with the nine volts battery. And oh, this is still um, quite okay. But it's so much faster than all the other boards all right okay let me see something so there's an error uh, for some reason when i drive this guy look at this it's spinning spin the other way no when i drive this guy it works but both lights over there seems to come on. I spin the other direction too, but it's just, um, it seems like the light here is lighting up a little bit. And my error light is on for some reason when I drive this pin. I don't know if it's a type of motor, if there's some back EMF, I don't know why, but it's certainly faster. Okay, so much faster. Okay, so now that we have that, now let me connect my uh there and then this so i'm connecting mo both motors at the same time all right so let's see if we can control this so what do i have so i have my directory here with our um code and we're looking at part three and so i've already because this is gonna take a long time and we've been through the code already. So and today there's really no circuit um, really in terms of I had to draw a circuit. So these are just the images that I grabbed from the internet and I'm putting it here for convenience, for your convenience. Um, but uh, you already seen many of these already. I look at them online, I showed them in the slide, but just in case you um, download the code and you wanted to kind of look at them while you're going through the code, you have it there for reference. Um, so let's start with the Arduino. And so for example one, we've written the code. All I've done is went through and changed LM29, whatever we had here to Citron, and then just updated the diagram. Now there's one thing I didn't show you about this board. That's really, really cool. And that is on the underside of it. And so if you look, um, you can see that it tells you what um 
you know, top pin is direction here, the next pin is positive modulation, then ground. Of course, we know it's always four pins, so the middle one is not connected. And then it tells you the header, how to connect, and then here's the table of how to control it, right? Very, very simple. Pulse load modulation is on. You're going to get um, some kind of direction out from A and B, and that's going to depend on what direction um, pin you have. Um, what's the direction pin? Zero or one. If pulse load modulation is zero, well, then nothing, which is perfect for us to control our speed. We said that before. So that is essentially the table that I have here. Um, pulse load modulation is zero. Things are off. It's on. Depending on direction bit, we can either be zero forward or backward. Again, it's a motor, so we don't really care or no. Uh, what I've decided to do is just like we said, for our Arduino, we're going to use pin four and five. Remember four was going to be our direction, the next pin, um, speed pin, and then similarly two and three, where we had two as the direction and three. And so I just have those connected up here. And the very first example, all we're interested in is controlling the um, the speed and direction. We don't, and we use this using the direct pin drivers. So this is us just simply telling direct pin to set pulse rate modulation to some value, and we step through it and see. Now, one of the things we remember that we have to do is at first we have to set some direction. So because we're using GPIO for our direction, we're gonna toggle it on. So that's gonna be let's say forward, for example. Um, but the code is pretty straightforward. Nothing um, that we haven't covered before is the exact same code. The only thing I had to do is update these values, the table, and then, you know, since we using just one pin, well, just one GPIO we need instead of two in our previous example. So let me open up um, this and let's try and run our code and see. So, doo -doo -doo -doo. okay, so where's our main function? Our main is going to parse input and then look for our port. Now let's make sure that our, that's the port we are on. We're using the correct port. So let's do um, let's do Gort and then do Watch and make sure that we see which port it's connected to. And it looked like fourteen eleven two zero one, and that's connect correct. So um, Control C there. And then let's go to, we're already in the directory. So let's go to Arduino exercise one. And let's do go. Actually, I'll just go back up once. So I don't have to keep going into each one of those directory. So I'll do go run exercise one main and connect. And assuming that all we're connected and we could hear that the buzzing already. And then 30, and we don't see anything running just yet. And this look like if it's on and we have an error. So not sure why we have an error. So by now I would expect this to start spinning and then it's off and then it's repeating. All right. So that is not working. So let's control C this and I am going to, I think this is reset, reset the board. Um, what I want to do is change which board um, motor is being controlled. So let me do that. So let me change this and put it over here and here. And the reason why I want to do that is because um, notice when we we're sending the pulse just now, this error bit um, light came on. There was also um, a LED here is telling me at all at least the direction it recognized that we had selected a direction But somehow the pulse was not enough to get our motor going So I switched it to this other motor just to see because when we were testing it one of the motors for example was showing us An error when we tried to test it. So I don't know if there's difference between the motors or whatever, but I have two different motors um, I'm being used normally you would not have that in a project um, I don't know why that would cause an issue um, so let's do run again and let's see. Okay, so I hear the beeping. Oh, and notice no issue there. It starts spinning that motor. But we have an error. Um, but the motor is still spinning. And then we hear the speed going up. And then it's 
off and then oh notice oh this is by far the best control we've had of motor notice how soon we're able to start spinning that motor now i don't know why it wasn't working for that other motor we can look into that but i'll have to do some work to figure out what's wrong with that other motor that's why it didn't want to work all right and so let's go to two and so exercise two and what does exercise two look like exercise two we're still using the direct pin driver but this time we're going to do ramp up and ramp down you know maintain speed and ramp down and so again that's just some logic now to increase the speed hold it at max and then ramp it back down but everything else still stay the same four and five and as we just demonstrated this is the right con pin configuration so we end run that and it should start spinning and it does and we're up to the, going up to the maximum speed and then we're max holding it Then we're gonna start ramping down. Okay. And then we're gonna stop. Oh, nice. Control C here. All right, let's reset. And let's do example three. Example three is where we actually gonna ramp up and we're gonna use, um, change the direction. And again, using the direct pin we're gonna to toggle direction. So that's how we introduce in, but we're using GPIO. So let's run this, this is three. And connecting and start spinning very early. So there we go, we're going up. And so can't spin too fast for me to tell, but I want to make sure it, it changes direction because our light there should tell us clearly of but since both of them are lit okay slowing down there and then there you go reverse change direction okay and so it reversed um that's really not confused about the error and confused about why the two LEDs I have to figure it out okay so, so so we have changed direction so that's fine let's reset and continue and so example four is where we're gonna use the motor driver now so we're not using GPIO pins and stuff still the same the only difference now is using the motor driver you got a new motor driver and now you just set the direction pin and we only need to set one direction pin because that's all we have and so we're still gonna do the ramp up ram down reverse direction but we can use the motor driver so let's see oh control c we want to do example four and so let's see okay so we start spinning and again nothing different to me so far in terms of using the motor driver versus um direct pin control but of course the motor driver just makes it a lot easier um you're just one pin you have to initialize yourself which is usually the speed pin well the motor driver when you specify the speed pin um so it's slowing down um it's going to come to a stop and then change direction and control c yes all right so now we want to try the last example to see if we can get two of the motors running um and so uh let's see that should stop them from moving <laughs> this is what a contraption all right so this last example run this both motors should turn hopefully uh we'll see um so that motor is turning and there we go yep and you can't see this um i don't want to bring things too close to cause an issue but yeah um the leds are the error leds are on and off at different times but and i'm not sure why but uh, right now it's slowing down the error led both leds are on they're off now but 
Um, so yeah, I'm not sure about the error LED, what it's telling me. But at least the motor seems to be controlled fairly well. Um, they're going up and down, as expected. Um, so there's only one more test I'd like to do is plug this all up to the ESP8266 and see what happens. If you remember our um, spinning up and spinning down, it's sort of random for these guys, so they're not gonna be in tune. Okay, so let's stop the code. So that's the Arduino and the Cytron board. Um, I'm not disappointed, I'm very happy because it gives us the widest range of control we've seen so far. Like we, in double digit, low double digits, around before we even get like 20, um, in terms from zero to 255, we're already seeing the boards, the motor start turning. So that's, that's good. I'm still not sure what the error mean or why both of my, um, MA and MB LEDs are lit when the, the motor is clearly just turning in one direction. But besides that, I absolutely look forward to using this and it seems like it works really well with the Arduino. So let's now do a quick test of this and, uh, um, ESP8266 and for that I will take out this and I'll bring in the ESP8266 with a shield and the shield we say we're going to use is D3 uh, and I think D7 so let's plug this in D3 well let me try this out of motor force I don't know if you know which one is going to come out for us anyway so, okay, so let's try that. And these, okay, so that's the nice thing about this is how easily we can swap the thoughts and con connect to something else. So my power is still connect. Um, I know that's terrible, but you know what? Uh, considering all the other crazy stuff I've been doing here, this is not the worst. Um, I think um, the, I'm not sure what the, IP address for that thing is, but I believe, so let's go to ESP8266, and uh, let's do, if I run example one, for example, if I run example one, and then I say that I'm connected to 10, that 10, that 100, that 107, colon 3030, I believe is the port. Um, so let's see if that connects. Starting, okay. No, it didn't connect. Okay. So maybe I don't have format on that board. So let's just see if I can connect formatter. So let's see which port is this on. So, port. Scan serial. So this is just uh, USB uh, to a UART. Okay, that seems fine. Um, let's see here. Um, if I do this and I go to tools and then serial monitor and I look here and let's say I reset this board. I want to see. Um, so pressing reset. Okay. So the IS, the IP address is 100. Okay, good. So I already have um, this with a uh, formatter on it. So all I have to do is change my code to use IP address 100. Ooh, good. So 100. So there we go. And so let's run and see if we can. And yes, you hear the beat, the song. And it sort of looks, yep, it start turning. So what's interesting now is that with this ESP8266, it is able to start spinning the motor very early. So maybe the other ESP8266 I was using is bad because this starts spinning it and you can hear it going up. And it's getting to the max. I'm glad I tested it because it looked like, okay, the problem is with the, with the other ESP8266, so it starts spinning at 40 something. And so, yep, that's working.
So maybe that other ESP is 266 I have is bad. <laughs> it's not able to drive it. Well, the abuse that I put it through is no surprise. And then if you look at the, the board, it actually, um, when you get to the higher speed is when it starts showing an error. All right, so let's skip and let's reset. And then let's jump to like example five, for example, <laughs> for example. So let's jump to exercise five. And we run this and we should see both so start spinning. So this starts spinning there. And then this guy starts spinning too. It's a little bit slower, but you know, I'm using a nine volt battery. And, but it does seem to be working. That guy stopped, this is gonna stop. And eventually, and then reverse direction. It was going this way just now, it should start going the other way. And then this guy, should start running it, turning at some point. So maybe the, the yeah, so it's, it's turning back the other way. Um, I don't even remember which direction the other guy was going, but okay, it seemed like it is working. Um, I don't know if the reason it's turning so slow is because of the nine volt battery. All right, so I think this is enough. This is going on for too long. This is way too long. All right, so uh, let me stop this. reset all right so conclusion <laughs> what do we learn today well the silent board is really nice a lot of great features and i think it's working fine i'm not sure what the arrow led means i'm not sure why sometimes i get both of the ma and mb um led on when i'm for the direction it doesn't seem like that should be even possible but you saw it, or maybe you didn't, hopefully you did. Um, other than that, I really, really like the board. I, I like it soon as I saw it, and I play with it. And what I will do is I'll make another video, follow-up video, and I'll use com two completely different motors, because these are the motors that I use it with, and they work perfectly fine. So I'll use these motors instead, these gear motors, and they're identical, so we're not going to have this weird situation of you know, two different motors or anything like that. I'll retest it and show you the results. So that's gonna be the next video. It's, we can think of it as a redo um, with this drive, this board, Cylon board, and two identical motors. Um, the current, maybe using the 11 volt with those bigger motors shouldn't be a problem. Um, so we'll, we'll see. Um, but there it is. Um, let me know if you have some other ideas with that said, um, I'll cut it off here. See you in the next video. Take care. Bye.